Fun Bonan and welcome to Eat Daily Teta, where the youth is taking charge in this show. And today we're looking at the business of art. As soon as we talk about art, abazalaba ninga bafun ukvumela abantuana babo to go there because basbuzo guti imal iko na in. Ela migi kama mina ukini nongo waga shandu ganto ogu yeno toli kwa moli mlezanda usiswe tu ufortune waga mandlala. We wanna find out exactly what it is. Now, South Africans, do we have even interest? We are do we even buy it? If it is anything so goopy, ganjani, that's what we unpack and finding out you can give us a call as well it's 113 or the hashtag is the hashtag is it 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 is the hashtag so I didn't okay, buy them myself. And I got it to me. Like, na Nicole let wa kamashi le wana kwa bush pakrish mapula ni. Eskin is already said. Revla vla kata ba ya art il khundro ni kuchibar na chela ta ego na na. Because a lot of times, Kini, when you speak about art, people say no, but it's so bougie. It's for the cultured people. Yeah. But khalele khalele ba taru na ba ita this culture chaka matoko in the olden days, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Le khundro ni kuchibar na chela ta ego na na. Because a lot of times, Kini, when you speak about art, people say no, but it's so bougie. It's for the cultured people. Yeah. But khalele khalele ba taru na ba ita this culture chaka matoko in the olden days, you know. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Le khundro ni kuchibar na chela ta Please use the hashtag Daily Teta. For now, let's welcome our studio audience. Rutai Thoma Mo, Rutome Ka Abuti. Abuti, utwa ko Jan Fes. Gopa untume leka libi tola hao. Oro vata khor na ko Jan Fes. What was the first introduction ya ho? Ko at? Na ka li na ki khuli shua wa pela. Eh, ka vutsi vutsi na ora ke vikshal re ken la mod lunche ati chiki ka wakala wa na kongwe. Rao che lewa ma khola re na. Kho che lo re ke indu. Jasa na li wuli changa tanga cha jari cho cho ha li gona. So nte ne ba di rango re ba tkene ba chela me tika raga yona. Ne di li mieta. So mar na kongwe lo ne ka uncho o lo wa noro ke fa yon. Nte na idir le yi. Yana na idir la for personal use. Lo e ni mara ka na kongwe ka hono wancha tla la ka la be. Ke mga tkana u chang skili se lo gochi nga sona. O se shumisha tu or se hono benefit a mo pe lo. So nte kana wira ngu ira wu to make a living out of it. Mm. I know for a fact, you know, if you drive to provinces like Mpumalanga, Limpopo, yeah. on the side of the road, mm. and they've got beautiful pieces. But sometimes, you're in Kenya as well. I think that's why about Zalbe is cutting But I'm skeptical if you got wanna go to art as a business as well. But mm. I'm gonna ask Usama, do you think about Zali they look at the art as a business or by Kabanguti? It's something you want to be able to or it's something that will never make you good to when the email is in. Uh, Dumela and Castillo, Nagal Bichok Samuel, but why do you understand the art? Because all Mutsa or Kabat Ruiz and Tesso had to mail. But why do you know about Mutsa It's a teaching, it's a nursing, it's a doctor. Yeah. That's it. Art, they don't understand it. And uh, there is a living come art. Mm. So no Rashe, Rashe, but Lutin Siki art. Mm. Every work art. So mm. Bona, they don't understand. Rona, you think you're not understanding your art. Mm. So you, when at some point you wanted to maybe uh, to Uk to Ebane? Yeah. Well, well, now I used to draw a little school and keep drawing like the classmate. Well, 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 well. <laughs> Draw a little mate, then one battle at one run that thing. So, Kikera Kayo, so it was good. It was living by then, Cascolo. It was something. So, you wanted to continue and do it? Yes, but then I want to be like, I encourage our Kichele Pilikayo. But, but, so kids say other things. But, German Jensen? No key and Zilarness Mosantin. Oh, I see. So, I'm going to have one good to consider to a wasuk to have a Mutalang attention. We've got a fine art um, artist here. Maybe perhaps you've got a lot of people who are going to be able to do this. How expensive would you get formal education and formal training for a fine art? And if yes, how expensive was it? If no, how are you breaking into the market? Yeah, art. Come on, sorry, my papa. A calibito get Robert or has got son. A kid's a comatatin. A fine artist. A kid who's a killing one out longer. Vele on a drawer, got lassing, a capasa metri, a capasa. A mama are go boner on a vele. A where hono draw. A requisite school on Catamaga duty. Duty, duty, got drop out. A calbagal out. Okay. Yeah. Act drop out the guy the operation Kahuta, Kaya College, eh, Kaya is a fine art, Kapasa, Kaba qualified. So, eh, Aki Hutel Ago Laling, eh, Kia Troa, Kia di preschool, Kia Teleng Hore, Veleke Maketa, Msebizuaka Kayona, Kaya Kodi, exhibitions, Lego, the art galleries, 
go Peter Marisbeck ilo Deben. So Gabona or Revele a support a gift for one hand like a qua, Cataca Mojo Beck, Lehona Mojo Beck in the Gator one, I'm Savis or no, Mara Chelete on a Hubim. Hubim. So with a Didi Atiam Toman, Rotswal Bofan, Hoch, Libu Picasso, but they better different types of art. When I with a M. Toman. Eh, Kesa Macayo and Atila Ochi or Revele, eh, Msevis Waga, or Hashis, eh, Gita into a the sculptures, mm. uh, lady pictures, uh, mm. lady apart, or even lady at a the drawer, mm. so yeah. Oh, 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 oh like what is an idea, that's so. all. Uh, that didn't talk about anything. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like what you keep being. Okay, so like, uh, uh, I mean, it's something that we've seen with Mom Esther Matlangu. Yes. She got discovered, and I mean, she does absolutely amazing work. So perhaps, yeah, it's a chance to have. Or somebody I hope discover a lane are talking hi new mm. new lane. Yeah, no, and Kumbula and Lilang, I was trying to buy another house and bring the painting in your corner and so the niggas in chat, I can also keep it more fifty thousand. I'm just sure we are all alone because we born it on the left. Because I'm not saying he painting of fifty thousand. Lee, let me come to you. Do you think there's money in the business of art? Hello, everybody. Yes, I do actually think there's um, business in art, especially, you know, when that art gives you the va va boom. What is a va va boom? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> how can it's, it's the quality. Oh, yeah. Yes, especially if there's color and mm. there's a story behind it. Mm. Yes, there is business in it. And people can make money. And uh, how can I say it? Life is art. Oh, wow. Yes. And <laughs> let, let me ask this. Do you think us as black people, do we understand that? Do we even buy or support the art business? We are some, like, it's a 50-50, hmm. basically. Um, people like art, especially if it um, represents the past, hmm. you know, hmm. and it brings the story out in, hmm. you know, as I said, uh, I'm going to repeat it again, hmm. the va hmm. you know. So I think especially, like, life is art, and, yeah, Plex, um people, they can buy art. Yeah, you like, well, it's all about yes. va vum vum uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> as well, maybe you have that piece of art on Nayo, Yagbiza Malini, and Usa willing in good Uko, Mdampe Ukule, when it comes to buying art, or Momio Bantabati, Shingaba Nai Vava Vum Yankon. I'm worried about that Vava Vum because that Vava Vum sounds like an Alicala fail. So, what happens to pencils uh, as sketch artists yeah. and those who use salt and who use sand to mm. do their art? Yeah, but I know color, so does that mean it's the Vava Vum is no longer there? <laughs> but let's, let's speak about, we've got a Zvagashi, who's Zvagashi all the way from Tanzania, her name is Jolly. Jolly, tell us, as, as, as a, a person who maybe enjoys art, how much are you willing to pay for an art piece? Well, as long as they relate to the art piece, mm. I feel I could pay any amount. Any amount, girl? Any amount. 100,000 rand, you are paying it? Well, if I do have it, yes, I would. Oh, that's good. That's good. So, Kenny, if she had your 50,000 rand, come on, Charlie is willing to give it to you. Perhaps maybe let's speak to another person. Rikorna, how much were you willing to pay? Up to how much? Uh, well, to be honest with you, I uh, don't really have a certain price where I could say that art is, should be valued at or yeah. is valued at. Um, I believe that art, you know, if it touches you in such a way where mm. you feel like I could wake up and look at this piece and I'll be ready for my day, mm. then you can pay pretty much anything. Mm, mm, mm. It should be priceless. You mm. cannot put a price on art. Oh, that's lovely. Kini, you go attend my museums, art museums? Yes, I, I've been there as well. I've tried to buy a price now, but let's quickly get something on social media before see a break in. There's something from Utra. Art is one aspect which we need much attention. I'm a young artist doing poetry and music. My art is basically the ink. Being in a disadvantaged area uh, in Jenga Eastern Cape, it's almost like uh, art is illusion or more than a reality. So, so that's a problem in our argument as well. As I men say, it's a booyah after this. Welcome back to Daily Tetans. The business of art. Is it something that retires seriously more South Africa? And do we have our parents' support? We're joined on the couch by Rolin Slamslang, who is a, an art curator. And then also we've got uh, Neil Dundas, who also works at the Goodman Gallery. He's an administrator, a curator. You're basically like um, the go to guy there. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Daily Tetans. Thank you. Let's speak a little bit, and we'll start with you, Rolin Slamslang, and maybe perhaps Rikwe. 
ke batho ba na gana ka art ba na gana go ba the artist bona abana gane go ro there's other jobs that are around there and you've got one of those jobs u curator u etsang so as an art curator i basically well it actually starts off with having a love for art yeah fine art specifically mm. and um yeah fi okay fine art is i think if we categorize it academically okay. is basically someone who has a sense of you know who's been introduced into uh like maybe basics around uh drawing for instance mm -hmm. uh we would say an introduction into drawing introduction into color uh form and basically you know just getting it and understanding proportion of the human body so it's a study so it's okay. an area of study and it usually goes from i mean you can have a diploma course or you can have a degree or bachelor's or a master's mm. and then that's what would basically describe what mm. uh, fine art is yeah. and as a curator meroko hoke so my i think my role is basically to mediate between the artist and their work so oh. i enjoy basically interrogating people's process mm. you okay. know in their art making so i would maybe perhaps be invited by an artist for a critique mm -hmm. and say i have this painting or i have this series of works that i'd like your opinion on mm -hmm. and then i would be invited into the studio or wherever that they work and then we'd have a conversation about their conceptual development what they want to basically uh, relate through their work mm -hmm. the message they want to relay mm -hmm. so we we'll look at ways that they've been able to articulate that through writing as well as does that match anything you know does that relate to the image that they've created or a sculpture or whatever form of art that they're working on okay let me come to you Neil, um on this one we we often see uh, the pieces maybe on the street or on uh, somewhere else not in galleries how how will it takes for me to take my painting to a gallery or is there a form of maybe i should uh, write something to, or produce something that my art should be in a gallery that's probably the biggest question everybody here will want to ask. Mm. The I think really all art actually probably begins here mm -hmm. and then on the street mm. or at home at your desk at um somebody earlier said well life is art. Mm. Yes. Um and there a, a really well-known American artist nearly a century ago said art may not be life but life would be very poor without art. Mm. And actually art is everywhere around us mm. and it might be in the architecture of your building mm. it might be in the choice of colors like for, for your set a piece of art mm. exactly <laughs> so like look it. at those shoes <laughs> those shoes are a piece of art mm. Mm. Um, and I think the avenues into art today are really from everywhere but the most frustrating thing for artists and you were talking about rural mm. yes. artists yeah. the the access to things is yeah. what is still a problem in our economy. South Africa's economy is remarkably robust for its size. Mm -hmm. And there is an art economy. There are people doing really well out of their art. And I think of somebody that I've worked with now for 35 years, mm -hmm. like Sam and Slingetwa, mm -hmm. who studied in Rourke's Drift because mm -hmm. there wasn't money to go from Kwadukuza or from Temba mm -hmm. to a college that would help him in Johannesburg mm. but and he he had to play some games with his parents mm. to get them to allow him to go on the train to KZN and go to Rockstrift mm. yeah. but he, he found a mentor and I think for a lot of artists that's what you're talking about in terms of um, what Roderick is talking about being a curator you do have to mentor how the artist sees themselves getting their work publicly known that was actually my next question it's a very hard question yeah. to answer yeah because if you are stuck in a tiny town somewhere in a rural place maybe a gallery is not going to find you easily yes. but perhaps a curator who goes around and looks mm. and really looks and engages the community mm. will find somebody um some of you in the audience certainly anyone who's worked with the arts for a long while may know um a woman who worked on the arts and culture part of the Codessa conferences, mm. who co-founded the Alex Art Centre, mm. uh, mm. Sisbongi Lomo Mortlua, mm. her husband Pat is an artist. Mm. She started out as um, studying 
art and printmaking, mm. decided she didn't really have the talent to make it. Mm. She was wrong. Um, <laughs> but she became a curator mm. as a way of saying, I know things about the art and I know things about who I look at and think they're better than me at mm. this. Mm. I want to push their things forward. Mm. And she got involved in organizations like Funda in Soweto, mm. uh, Fubo when it was downtown in the yeah. market, mm. yeah. in a little basement. Mm -hmm. But she really helped a lot of people who otherwise would never have had access. Mm. And she came to us at the Goodman Gallery in the 19, middle 1980s and said, big white box, mm -hmm. big white people, mm -hmm. big white elite money. Mm -hmm. We don't need too many more of me. Mm -hmm. I'm an old white man now. <laughs> I've been around in this world a long time. Yeah. But she said then, you need a studio gallery where, and I'll come and work for you because you don't even know how to go and find the right yes, people. Yeah. But give me the chance and I'll bring you some new, young, relevant, black South African artists mm. with something original to say. Mm. And that's the first thing I would say to most artists that we might come across. Mm. If you want to break into the art world in some real way, mm -hmm. you have to stand out. You have to be original. You can't look like everybody but, but else. Speaking about that as well, I'm thinking about the prizing issue. Mm -hmm. Maybe Horishata, I'll come to you because you, you find prizes like 50,000 and you find an art almost the same size as well, going in for 1.5 and, and sometimes going for less than that. And you ask, how do you prize the, 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 the art? Well, I'm usually engaged in workshopping uh, sessions around, you know, pricing of artwork, mm. seeing my practice as a business. Mm. And this is through one of the shows that I've curated for the past three years. Mm -hmm. And basically what we engage artists uh, that are in their early careers or emerging is basically how to attend to such things. Mm. And I think what artists need to understand is that the buyer or collector will see the appreciative value mm. in your work, right? And then an ordinary person may not necessarily be informed about... You're you talking know, about us now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For, for, so, for you to... Un so, so the buyer and collector understands how, you know, uh, sees a trajectory in, in this person's career. So mm. they see how dedicated they are to their process and how they are engaging the art market. Mm. So maybe this person has a studio you know, that says something. Mm -hmm. This person is either, you know, engaging art gallery spaces, like, you know, uh, maybe emerging art gallery spaces and even established mm -hmm. uh, institutions, but whether in the form of an art residency, for instance, so if they, an art residency would be maybe a three month period where an artist goes and maybe uh, pursues their academic progress of the work that they are trying to develop. Hold on, I'm a bit confused because in the normal <laughs> business world, if you're pricing, let's say you make clothes, you're pricing, you're pricing on labor, you're pricing on material amount and all that. You're saying that's not how it's priced. No, in that in, it includes that. Okay. So you have to take into account the amount of, I mean, the cost that went into buying your materials, materials. Mm. the hours that you've you sort of logged into your process. What if I lie about hours? No, you can't lie to yourself. You can't lie to yourself. So, but I could have, let's say for instance, I could have priced it with all those things, like yeah. a formula A, I can price my art at like 10,000 Rand. Yeah. But somebody else sees it in the Goodman Gallery and can say, listen, I'm willing to pay 100,000 Rand for this. Is that how it works? Well, you have to have an artist price and there's the selling price. Oh. So, so take into account that if you have a third person selling your work. There's a commission. There's a commission yeah. that will be factored. Yeah. But then it's unethical for artists to price the man and not price the actual work of art that they produce. Ah. So because you came through and I assumed that you can afford yes. a work worth 50,000 rand, for instance, mm. and someone else comes right after you, and then negotiates mm. my price, mm. and I'm more or less selling a work that belongs to a particular series, then that becomes unethical. And I'm not thinking, you know, in the interests of my business. So okay. you have to treat it as a business and say, this is where I am in my career, and in the next year, in the next two years, I want my work to appreciate okay. to a certain level. We'll get on with the conversation. We just need to quickly go for an ad break. When we come back, we're speaking to the artist, and do they have the potential to make a real business in the environment in South Africa? Please don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to a daily tetra na manje sakuna my business of art and wanna find out exactly what he a yin ends a banta banning by choose is it passion is it money or anything as in a one such ughole like little business we do have the very controversial ayanda mabulu uh or to my cool no deba um the former president and a banta banning by clega banya foot but it's it's what hard art is and also we do have utato uh tabo hale who's a graphic designer which is something a banta banjenga manja Babona ngati ba appreciate aga cool, especially the youth guys. Welcome to it, Eddie Chetta. Ah, sure, sure. But I had. Yeah. As far as we are concerned, to um, to mega cool empire tini after that controversial paintings our painter about the former president, and you had a story as well. Yeah. What was the story for those who don't know? Yo. Nah, you know, first of all. Uh, if you understand that, um, for years I've been so It's fine. Yeah, and I've been mixing and I'm trying. Ted? Um, most of, for many years, Aban Bagoti, like uh, my people and our people, black people, mm. have been accused of not uh, putting down and telling their story in a right way, assumingly that the right way should be writing and stuff. Mm. We've been telling and we, we grew up. Uh, Sibali Samabalu and telling having our grandmothers and mothers and grandfathers yes. telling stories in a more oral way. Yes. You know, so then one has to realize that like, you know what, uh, there are ways of telling stories. So that Singapeli Sibakui on the side of constantly being accused of not telling stories. Because if you die and if you are a child, the moment you're born, you're born crying. Mm -hmm. And that's godly. Because it means you are born, you know, with a story, with the art of storytelling inside you, you know. So there's no way that you can come out and create some, you know, um, metaphors, you know, made of words with sweet nothings or mm. pictures with sweet nothings. Yet you see that stuff is happening out yeah. there, and there. I had a, let yeah. me just interject here and come in. Uh, the artwork, there must be a story behind it, or I can just throw in something without any story. I and I don't believe that you can just throw something. We are born and because um, I, I love my people, yeah, and Aban Bagoti, they are in a certain situation, and if I don't do a thing right now, or anyone here doesn't do a thing, then uh, the situation will constantly be the same and my people will be stuck in the same predicament. Mm -hmm. And if I don't talk about that, then it becomes more of a problem. Mm -hmm. And another thing if we understand is that to some of us, at Ayo, Ayo Kari, Ayo, Ayo, Ayo Ndo Gwenza, Imali or Yokfuni fame, Yabona, Ati, Umdom Nyama, I believe that Ati goes along with spirituality and it carries it. Mm -hmm. and, and at some point when it carries spirituality, sometimes you, it, it's not up to you to decide what to do. Mm. Let's speak to, to, to Tato. Tato, you So, but graphic design. How do you explain this to them? And uh, as we know, society, graphic design is one of those things that really accept a little bit more easier. The challenge is how as a graphic designer again. Um, like, but I understand the like situation in Kilungu mm. and then do you think you're in a situation eh? like you do like a yeah, and stuff. So, in the case you draw like on primary, mm. like primary, mm. and then, um, uh, and then like you limit to like a you like a you like a draw like a computer. Oh, okay, yeah, so it's a little from when we have computer salmonian for primary. Like, yeah, like yeah. the like mm. So, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. And, and, my privileges are serious <laughs> and, <laughs> and some of your challenges in, in, in graphic design, King? Uh, if not, let's on. I, I can say I can not so so far. Another oh. challenge? Open up now. Do you Cheesy. I end on this one because uh, it seems as if it's about Baguti. Basana Koguti, they don't understand uh, e art. Mm. They don't even sometimes uh, support it. Mm. Do uh, you feel that? Ah, uh, I'm going to be problem lay. I want Baguti by understand the art. I want Baguti by art. I want Baguti gave birth to the artists. Mm -hmm. So they themselves, they art. Mm. They at some point they don't need to 
to, 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 to shout to the world that they understand art. Mm. It is the world at some point that doesn't understand art. Mm. The curiosity that the world shows into art shows that they don't understand. Mm. Okay. Our mothers and fathers, those who gave birth to us, yeah. they understand art. Mm. You understand? So sometimes things get to, 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 to be turned upside down. Mm. Upside down. By who? There are institutions who are running art. Mm. who constantly, deliberately deprive mm. people, black people, and the marginalized, they deprive them, they deprive the marginalized and the black people of art mm. by skyrocketing the price of art. I see. Quickly, and and it's a deliberate thing. What's the story behind the, the beautiful beads? So, I think we're going to dive deep into the conversation right now. Mm, yeah. Must we're a break in. Let's go to the breaks. So, Koke Lange E, Tolo Gangana, Sbuye, Se Kulu Melilu Tabale Art. Sambe. Welcome back to Daily Tata. If you are just joining us, the monthly supply of South Africa is going to be supply. And as an artist, is that the ultimate goal? But we also want to get into a little bit of some of the challenges, some of the politics around the business of art. You know, as we said earlier on in the show, it was not something that was really open to Africans. So we want to go deeper into that. On the couch, we're joined by Nathaniel Shepard, who is the owner of Danger. Jakhafar Ingozi Print Studios. That's a name and a half. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but before we speak to you, uh, Nathaniel, let's go to a bit of social media. Oba Gang Den Malife. I love art. It's one of the most influential parts of communication in our lives, more especially to us as Africans. Most of our stories and history is told through art. We are grateful and let and let our roots evaporate as our interest blossoms. I think that's I mean, he basically says what Uyanda has already spoken about to say. We are art. Mm -hmm. We are born from artists because they've made and they've created us. But perhaps I speak to you, Nathaniel, about where did Danger Khefar Ingozi Print Studios come <laughs> from and why that name specifically? I mean, we came from all over the place, mm. um, from abroad, locally. Mm. We've studied together mm. at WITS, at the okay. University of WITS, um, and we studied fine arts. And I think kind of through that academic um, forum for fine arts yeah we kind of learned the kind of pros and cons yeah. to the world that we were heading into yeah um i mean it kind of goes back to this idea of communication mm. language is a very big part of our studio and it's a very big part of our society mm. and a variety of languages <coughs> and miscommunication yeah. being something that happens you know daily mm. um and our studio kind of is very much promoting many ways of narratives, many, I mean, many types of narratives, many ways of speaking, many ways of language, mm. whether it be sound, texture, mm. Um, mm. color, or even just dealing with the politics of black and white, okay. which would be in relief printmaking. Yes. Um, so th the birth kind of stemmed from, we got many opportunities as young artists, yeah. okay. especially straight out of university, in our last year of university. And we noticed the amount of money we were making other artists and other galleries and other studios. Mm. I mean, these are the problems with the institutions that Ayanda was mentioning yeah. earlier. Um, and people are making 500,000 and a million on works that the three core members of our studio pretty much produced. Sure. Oh. Um, so at that point we realized if we're working for these prominent artists in these prominent spaces, why can't we use that and independence and agency them. for yeah. ourselves and use the technical skills that they loosely taught us, mm. um, but now use it to enable our own communities and enable our own youth mm. to correctly tell these kind of narratives, um, which, which otherwise they'd be exploited in other kind of Eurocentric institutions. Mm. Let me go to Holislas. Holislas, I want to come to you. Uh, we conversation is now Jaga Manjek Tenin. I'm a parent, I'm a ning, a skeptical acting when Abandona decided to go in and out uh, as a business. Is it because of politics? I and Zagalang, a pagati, or it's ignorant of us not to, to want to find out more information about what's happening? I think it's 
about finding out more. Mm -hmm. I think it's the lack of information mm. that decisions or not encouraging uh, our youth to actually pursue a career in the arts. Mm. It's because of the lack of understanding of how the industry works and uh, understanding how much opportunity there is, mm. you know, for for artists, you know, because there's a there's a point where it also becomes interdisciplinary, mm -hmm. where it involves arts administration. Where where does uh, and I guess that's what a lot of people very good say. Corona, you've drawn a picture of someone. Do th does that person then not have a right to say, "I don't want this art to be sold because it's a picture of me"? Look, sister, mm. all those things, you know, Mamel. As in terms and things and ways of doing things, got mm. everything to do with Western um, forms of indoctrination mm. to try and create barricades for us people not to be able to go on the other side mm. and achieve what we want to achieve. Mm. Township has been built to be whatever it is. Mm. And in the township, we came out and created spaceships through mm. storytelling mm. and art. Mm. You're not going to come to me personally, me. I don't know other artists. Mm. I didn't study this thing. Mm. You're not going to come to me. I don't care who you are. Christ was painted and you're hanging him in your house as a doll or something. Mm. That's assumingly a God to you. Mm. And you come to me, you tell me that I can't paint you. Who are you? Mm. Mm. I mean, okay, come, come on. Come in, come in. And also, I mean, I, I wholeheartedly agree. And also, I mean, Europeans have had a culture of coming here and depicting our people yes. throughout and telling time. us our story and telling yes. us our story and mm. depicting us in ways that we never really gave consent to mm. um and, and this is not to say that you need to ignore the conversation of how you use one's figure yeah. in in an image or in a painting i mean it's it's a the purpose is for kind of a conversation about what are our opinions when we see the ex-president mm. mm. or victims of rape oh. um being involved in a visual art. Mm. And with this kind of miseducation of the visual language, I think a lot of the time we get stuck up on the eroticness or the violence behind it and the goal behind Instead it. Instead of the message. And yeah, the man's relationship yeah. with the medium and why he thinks it's necessary to put such a grotesque image out there mm. and let's have a conversation that furthers that. You know, um, if, if you're a TV presenter, people always ask you what other job do you do? It's like uh, there should be other <laughs> things that you do to sustain yourself. Mm. Do you guys find yourself in a situation like that where people think, is that, is that what you do for a living? Or maybe you can have another extra form of income? Uh, I mean, yeah, I guess the way I personally would balance it and the way the, the collective sort of balances it mm. is we do, I mean, we're artists at the beginning, no, yeah. right? But then we do the very lovely administrative stuff on the side mm. and the kind of the business section the commercial the stuff. commercial section because at the end of the day we are young and black and in this position of privilege to engage in the business and economics of art yeah. while also maintaining your visual your artist uh, yes. your artistry but it is a struggle to be able to balance business and making work and not having them impact one mm. another mm. i know team mm. i'm not that's it uh -huh. that? <laughs> okay no. well, how do you sustain yourself okay in the system yeah this breath is contaminated oxygen la pan. Mm. Yeah. Two, I'm vegan. Okay. Mm. Yeah. One of the things that you need to understand as an artist is that you need to defeat the power of wanting. Mm. You know? And if you get rid of that thing, there won't be a time where you feel like you have to justify what you do or even try to, you know, um, create a subtle a, a painting with subtlety because you're scared that it won't sell because you wanted to sell mm. right now i'm doing a show mm. and there's not today anyway mm. by the way and there's not even one work that i'm putting for sale there people okay. will come and see it the idea is to make sure that the institutions and those who think that they've got a buying power that they can just walk in and take their cards and swipe and they buy artist is not for sale mm -hmm. and they should understand that we artists we we value the thing that we do for you should understand next time when you're dealing with an artist that you're not buying some african you know a nutrient street mm -hmm. vegetable piece of art 
Oh. Can I hold you right there, Ayanda? We're going to go for a great air break. I know that the, the guys who own the galleries perhaps might have a different or a differing opinion on this, but we're going to hear from them right after the break. Welcome back to it, Eli Tetas. I'm about the business of art. I'm Shlange, one of our executive good team. Imali and Zagala Ganjani as well. And there's a com question coming in from Patrick. Patrick, what is your question, Bob? And for you, Okbozo, how do you sell yourself and how do you grow from being a street art mm. artist, sorry to say that, mm. and to, to a gallery? Mm. How do you go about that? Maybe Anna can answer that because he's part of uh, Danger Hefar Ingozi. Uh, your partner is on the couch. To the question, how do you how do you sell your art? You know, I, I don't know that I can give you a definitive answer. Right, mm. the, the, the 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 conventional channel is through galleries, mm. but you know, we live in an age where where we have many other options. Technology is your friend, for example, mm. social media, yeah. Facebook, mm. Instagram. Uh, the 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 easiest way is get a a, a website with a preloaded e-commerce platform, for mm. example. Mm. You know, and those things are. They, they, you know, the unfortunate thing is that it's it's not accessible to everybody, and mm. you know that's that's one of the things that we sort of trying to figure out through our studio. You know, I said I don't know all the answers, but we know yeah. that that these are the, the experiments that we maybe we're one thing to I make. can ask as well: what pushed people from selling guma calories and going straight to the street? Is it because there is a red tape that you don't know? Maybe. Yeah, it, it, it's because galleries are exclusive spaces you know mm. um, gallery owners have to pay rent to mm -hmm. and that's where their interests lie mm. but um, y you know if you don't have the, the problem in, in Johannesburg in particular yeah. is that um, is that there isn't a conducive environment for that sort of thing our first lease agreement that we had for our studio was three years with personal surety mm. sure. You know, so the idea being that if you're not making your rent, if you're not, you know, they're coming after your they car, they're coming you. after your house. And mm. so, so the idea is that it's, 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 it is exclusive and it's very difficult to get in there. But, you know, what's worked successfully for us is that we're part of a collective and we're pulling our resources and that's basically how we've been able to survive thus far. Mm. You know, um, the, the, for me, there's, there's, there's a, you know, uh, the, the arguments about art for art's sake and, and all the, the sort of um, inherent mm. intrinsic values of art are very important. But, mm. you know, where, where I come from, what I provide to our studio is that, is that you need to also under, understand the value of art for market's sake. You know, mm. we, we live in a global economy where, where the creative industries are $2.25 trillion yeah. a year, right? Globally employs more than 30 million people. You know, in South Africa, the creative economy is 90 billion rand mm. and uh, employs anything up to, up to 30 million, uh, uh, 30,000 people yeah. in the country. And so, so, you know, the point is that, is that by creating a conducive environment yeah. where, where, you know, um, people Patrick, such as Patrick, Patrick yeah. are able to pull resources, are able to learn more about the industry, are able to learn about these sort of nuances. Um, for example, you know, the tax rate for personal for an individual mm. yeah. is up to 47%. Yeah. Oh, no. The tax rate for an uh, uh, incorporated company mm. is 28%. Mm. Right? So these are the things that artists need to sort of learn more about um, within that conducive environment. And here we're making arguments about art on, an, on a macroeconomic scale. We're talking about employment, our people need jobs. Mm. You know, um, whereas it takes four years, you know, up to five years to educate a lawyer an artist doesn't need a formal education. Okay. All you just need is passion and the, and the heart and the yeah. talent, okay. and that's how you, you change the economy. Okay. Quickly, let's go to the car. Neil, how do we make uh, art galleries more inclusive? Because if I'm listening in the room, there are young artists out there that do want to make art for market, but it sounds as if the, hey, your, your galleries are still lily white there. How do we change so, that? Well, interestingly enough, I think galleries have become less white, and the good thing is to see that there are black art dealers also making things. But I but still think- the black art dealers I speak with their nose? I the still ones. think they're an intimidating <laughs> yeah. space for a yeah. lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. And they shouldn't be, and w there, is, there are two things here. Something Anas said, and I said to him earlier today, the courage on his shirt is important. Mm. And it's what <laughs> it costs somebody like Ayanda to be in the position that he is today. 
the courage to stand out and be somebody who yeah. will tell that story. Mm. Yes. If you think about, someone earlier mentioned uh, Ma Esther Maslangu. Esther Maslangu, yeah. Esther made her work because she was an Indebele Gogo storyteller. Mm. It was, she didn't make it because she even thought there was a market. Mm. She started out making it because it was part of her daily existence. Mm. So this is the truth, is that the, the academic education can be very valuable to get yourself further up the ladder, but it is not what makes an artist. Mm. An artist is somebody who, when he's been persecuted in the way that Ayanda has been, mm. and that censorship in something like the Johannesburg Art Fair mm. caused a great storm, mm. but it made a lot of people but think twice. But are the galleries willing to back up, up an artist like Ayanda? We had David Goldblatt on that fair, uh -huh. and we decided we told the fair organizers, you know what? Mm. We're taking our show down. Uh -huh. You either put his work back or we're not exhibiting on your fair. He's what you're just saying right mm. now. Uh, I don't know, Ayanda? Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> They're not willing to back you up. Mm -mm. He says, so, mm -mm. But I think it's true that, that mm. too much of the art world is not willing to back it up and too, too much of the art world doesn't perhaps still have the social courage to do what someone like Ayanda has done. Okay. It is very hard to tell those stories, you especially when lots of people are pushing back on you. Yeah. But that is something that can give you a platform to grow a career on. Mm. For other people, if they don't let's have give, Let's give Ayanda a chance, because you want to say something. Need something else. You, brother man, mm. there, you don't need a color. You don't need a color. Why? <sighs> so where do you sell? Mm. Me. In general, if if we're out talking with color, we're exactly Look at me. You are at. <laughs> so you're selling, right? And I don't sell in the street. Mm. And what I do does it's not doesn't have a street value. It doesn't even have a color value. It's beyond that. Oh, nice. Yeah. The moment you start valuing yourself, you will understand that what a color is will serve you as a butchery and a slaughterhouse that will take your artwork and hang it on the wall to be eaten by flies and be rotten and it will take your reputation and spit you out like piece of something stinking whenever they feel like doing that but more especially yeah. more especially my brother mm. if you black so what you happens to the young artists I that don't have a privilege yako. and now you know that's a kind of privilege mm. 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 It's day in and day out mm. of screams of thousand thousand screams of you know black panics coming to my ears mm, mm, mm. to telling me that talk about us, put us there, tell the world who we are tell the world, you know, what it has made mm. us to be so that it sees what it has made of itself. Mm. And if I do those works and create them and even take them to those, to the galleries and spaces, mm. the gallery takes me and put me as a doormat and you ask me a question. You hear my brother? Name, you hear? One artist. One, who has ever told a post-94 South African story mm. the way I did? Name one, tell me. That here. is one of the things that I say. And why am I not in your institution and other artists who are now selling in the mm. street like they sell okay. vegetables? Give him a chance to, to respond. I, I don't, um, we, we can't represent everybody, of course, but mm. I think equally you've had a history where you've had some things in galleries, but you grew your career by a different way, by mm. interacting with a public and Direct. with the people you wanted to tell a story to. Mm. It is something I admire about you. I don't think, and I don't think you even make work intending that it will necessarily sell. I think you make it because you want the bigger audience to know your story and make a story. Does this bring in Nathaniel to just maybe call? I mean, you you also have a gallery, <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> and you're pacifying in this middle. <laughs> so maybe perhaps you can tell us from your opinion, Corey, how do you feel? I mean, is there exploitation in galleries? Yeah, 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 yeah. Full on, um, full on. And our space never ever wakes up 
th uh, uh, thirsting for any attention from galleries. Mm. Um, we get opportunities and we'll get opportunities from cats like William Kentridge mm. or from David Critt, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Print Studio. Yes. And we know the white politics behind those spaces. Mm. We understand the privileges that they inhabit. Um, and it's for us a lot of the times an exercise of soaking up as much information, what Koda was mentioning earlier, um, and opportunities as possible without mm. tainting your practice, mm. right? So I can go into a space with William Kentridge and deal with that kind of pomp and ceremony of mm. this contemporary uh, mm. uh, uh, South African art market, but also make sure that whatever I put down and whatever they're paying us for yeah. is to push our studio's work and to push our community. Nice. So if they want to pay for it, yep. then thank they you. <laughs> but we're going to still put okay, our... Okay, yeah. Mr. Shepard, let me come to you, my sister. You have a question or often we we was on a question. Yeah. Uh, um, Hell, you know, 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 Okay, so it's about also identifying any training institutions that might exist in, in your local area. Um, maybe the starting point would be recreation centers. If they might, I mean, the possibility is that I know the government is behind uh, a drive that is trying to bring artists into schools, particularly in the townships. And not all schools have this privilege, but I know that most mm. have a facility or a program that's being introduced to help uh, propel their arts and culture yeah. curriculum. So that's one point. But uh, I would also say the internet, I mean, technology mm. is your friend. It's yeah. also about uh, going online and searching for opportunities specifically to what it is that he wants to do. But only so, because of his cut is about our but all the information I'm waiting as well go to our Facebook page at Daily Theta or Shai hashtag in those things tall and guy. Sabon our cool but we're to wonder what you are on target. If you are an artist please do stay encouraged. Thank you very much.